This is off planet radio. <laughs> we'll do this while we have some semblance of order about this show. But uh, if you haven't noticed, this is Off Planet Radio, and we definitely are that. Uh, welcome to the show. Welcome back. I don't know where you'll hear this or see this because it seems as though, well, this probably won't get us thrown off of YouTube anyway. But um, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, we'll say something, then the scanners and bots on YouTube will inevitably probably. Um, I was really surprised. The Mike Williams show. Now I did a one-minute segment at the between the two segments on the Mike Williams show, where I took less than thirty seconds of Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Band and, pl and spliced it into the Denny Lane interview. That video got banned within f five minutes of putting it up. You cannot, you cannot anymore touch the Beatles. They're bigger. Now, God doesn't have the extension of copyrights that the Beatles have. Yeah, and the and the uh, the the company that, that was claiming the copyright had, of course, was like something MK Ultra or something like that. Wasn't it? it was like something MK? Like it was some weird, right? Right? It was like something interesting like that. But well, it's Bertelman, isn't it? It's what it was. It's Bertelman Music Group, which apparently has now taken over the rights to. Be but wasn't there an MK in there? There wasn't There's there something that said. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there was yeah. MK on the end of it. There's always that. But, well, we, I know just, that I, we know I, that Tavistock is del delicately protecting their vast intellectual property, which was used to lobotomize right. not one, two generations of people. So yep. There you go. Tonight we're anti lobotomy. We're going to go into June <laughs> today. We're 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 going to kick it old school, and uh, we have two. I will say extremely interesting guests who do extremely interesting work in a vertical subject that does not get discussed much at all, and certainly not the way that they handle it. And Emily's going to tell you all about that. Hi, guys. Good to be back. Um, yeah. So tonight, um, actually, I think what we're doing here is like a real nod to um, where I come from in every aspect of my life and what off planet radio comes from and that is i think a real true nod to underground radio and um, we have two guests with us tonight and we are going to get into the issues of the night mind and um i've gotten to know them both a little bit Jer uh, randy and i know jerry well so tonight our guests are jerry and nish from nox mente and randy and i have known jerry from just being around in the back the sort of back channels of the alternative media yeah in chat groups and whatever for a number of years. And I got to meet Nish when I was on their show and I really liked her. I really enjoyed being on their show. Um, and I lurked, uh, I I lurked for a while. <laughs> yeah, Jerry's yeah, a Jerry a lurks on his own show. Uh, Jer Jerry lur Jerry's a lurker and a vapor. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I enjoyed my experience there. I've been paying attention to what they're doing and talking to some other people who like to listen to their show and others who've been on the show. And I think what they're doing um, is really, uh, really interesting. So we're going to get to know, and, and they don't get enough attention. And so we're going to get to know them uh, a little bit tonight. And uh, we're going to turn some of their own treatment on them. And then we're going to get weird in the second hour. So make sure you guys stick around for that. But Jerry and Nish from Knox Mente, welcome to Off Planet Radio. Hey, guys, thanks for having us. Thank you for having us. It's a great honor. Totally. Right. This is like this big deal for us. We're all nervous. Yeah, I'm absolutely nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there need to be. We've, You're turning we've the tables. In, we pulled in <laughs> yeah. the trolls tonight, and uh, yes. we're, we're on our behavior. <laughs> yeah. So our, our know, troll uh, army is very small, so we're we're lucky. <laughs> Uh, so with, the, with trolling an army of one is sometimes all you need to make your day miserable, That's right? True. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. So, but you know what? I employ the good old fashioned technique of just don't look, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and it seems to work for the most part. Every once in a while I end up hearing about it, but you know, uh, anyway, guys. So, um, I think that, you know, 
there are some people in our audience that are familiar with you guys, but maybe not that many. And um, our audience is growing and growing. So we want to hear a little bit about you and, and you know, well, what you do. And this is one of the things I super appreciate that you guys just didn't make another standard truth or show or alternative media show. You know, we try and we like to think we do ours a little differently than most people do, but you guys chose to do something that just was totally different. That is not that you're, you're engaging some of the same people from the regular scene, but you're engaging them about something totally else. And I, I really, um, I think it's a great idea and more people should do things like that. So kudos to you for, for breaking the mold, but Thanks. I would really like you Thank to, you. um, yeah, share with us. You can start with, um, Jerry and then Nish sort of your journey into before you the, do that, can we just yeah. like maybe briefly just touch on exactly what it is Nox Mente is? I think that's yeah, I would, yeah, sure. sure. Um, let's, let's do that. Throw that uh, down there. So I, let me address everything you said. Thank you very much. Of course, that's gracious. Uh, Nish and I had been kicking around an idea. Well, actually, she'd come to me with Nox with the idea to do a show just about dreams, and I had been thinking about doing a show, but I wanted to do something unique and something that was that was deeper than an hour show, you know, that left people thinking that they could come back even next week and maybe even learn more, something like that, or do like giant eight hour shows like those conspiracy guys. Cause they do a really good job when they explore a subject. But we had talked about doing a show called uh, balls deep for a while. We're going to go balls deep on one subject and just <laughs> totally explore that. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. And you know, the is potential there, by the way. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, we love our gays. We love them. We uh, we looked. We were talking about. I know we've st we're still considering this. Talking to people who are aging to get their universal cosmology. Get all their. Let's hear it, God. Like, give us a dump, a brain dump for whatever, however long, and we'll just you know that'll be the interview and it be on record. I thought that would be interesting. Uh, yeah. But but the whole idea for Nox Mente was niches. Go ahead. That's your cue, um, Nish. Yes. Your cue. <laughs> I hit. Well, I didn't know if you were going to go further into your experience of how you ended up here. Oh. I just, I, I, I wanted to do, I've always been interested in dreams. I've talked dreams my whole life. I've got a, a reservoir, a reservoir. I can't even spit that a out. A reservoir, a reservoir. Thank you, a reservoir. A bucket. Of unusual dream experiences from a, from being a very, my first memories and um and then I, it just seems like we all have this opportunity there's it's very universal whether we remember them or not it's there for us to tap into every time we get into an altered state and um and particularly dreaming you know and it it, it just seemed like a great idea and jerry was I think the perfect person to pair up with. And we fell into each other's laps kind of at the same time. We love the woo woo. We like um, the whole underground feel as well, as well. And it, it just came together. It was seamless really. And there's a, a story within that that we can save for the second half. Okay. That sounds great. So I'm having a deja I vu by the way, just letting you know. <laughs> oh, awesome. All righty. I love that. To me, that, to me, I, I love deja vu. I'm like, that, you know, that means, that, yeah. That yes, never that, gets, that, you know, boy, that never gets discussed. And that's important. Yes, we weave that into our questions. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, okay. So, so your show is about, oh, go ahead, Jerry. No, I, I, I'm done. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, don't be okay. done just for now. <laughs> oh, yeah, just started. I, I'm, I'll let you talk. So, you know, you guys, your show is mainly about dreams and the night. I love that name, Nox Mente. Like, you know, I knew it. I knew what it was. I remember it from when, like, I guess from, I don't know where I knew it from. From but maybe it's just nowhere. Night. I made it up. Knew it yeah, meant night. Jerry, yeah. Jerry actually pulled that together. It might be, the, but it's it's real Latin. It's, it's archetypal. It's it means night mind. It, means night it does, it but that's what I say in my description. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I knew what it meant before you. Like, I mean, when you sent me a, sh a thing saying you were having a show called Nax Mente, I didn't even know you had a show, and I knew, oh, it's Nax Mente. That's, that's Nightline. That's because you've yeah. got the Latin training with the, the flashy visor. Of course, I did. I did. I did. I know. I did. 
God he yeah. chose. Thank God he chose Latin instead of German. It translates horribly in German. <laughs> I tried. I tried many languages actually. I, I had different sayings um, that seemed to flow. We, the one we, the one I wanted was Vox Knox. No, I like Knox nice. Mente better. Nice. Yeah, I, think I like Knox. Cool. I actually think it's a perfect but, name. <laughs> so that, I mean, we can, we can throw, anyway, sorry. We can, we, can, we can throw some German in. We can make the song for this uh, to this episode. Eine kleine Knox music. Right? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> all right. So there we go. We can hit up all the different kinds of triggers. Okay. So <laughs> you guys are shows about about dreams essentially, and you're talking to about their dreams. But everything you do is informed by the fact that you are very up and aware of all of the alternative information, the truth information, the woo-woo, the metaphysical stuff and whatever. So each one of you, like Nish, why don't you go first? Kind of tell us about how your journey into this, like how you realize that not only our reality in the dream state, you know, like worlds away from each other, but even the truth and what they present as reality are so far apart from, what, from each other. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I'm going to, I'm going to abbreviate this because that is a long story. I, I mean, I'll start with the fact that I, my very first memory was waking up into the flesh of a baby, like coming out of a dream. And I was waking up and I had a sleep paralysis experience. I'm under six months old. And I, I'm, I'm thinking at the time that it was literally a sleep paralysis experience and I couldn't move and I was feeling trapped. And, um, I, I see, I notice fat baby fingers and I think, oh shit, <laughs> you know, I'm in, I'm like in a little jelly suit. And, um, and then I look up and I see a mobile and, or mobile or however you say that. And, um, I realize I'm in a bassinet and I have full consciousness here. It's like coming out of a dream here, here and now for me. And, I was trying to vocalize and, you know, apparently I'm making baby noises. So my mother comes in and, um, you know, she has a, she actually had a conversation with me. She never baby talked to me. So she's like, Oh, look at you in there. And I corresponded this with her later because that was, there's a lot of movement in my early life. And so that was a very specific time and place. It was, this, you know, it was in a very, it was within the one year of my first year of life. And, um, she, she, you know, said, I don't know how you remember this, but this is that time period. So that's how it all started, Emily. I, I was okay. like the whole time so frustrated in life growing up, like try, like main things, trying to get like high eye hand coordination, tying my shoes, walking. I was reading and writing before everyone. I was super intelligent. And when I got into the school system, I got skirted away into the gifted program and um yeah we know that one real well yes yeah. and, and which is very isolating as you know yeah. well, it's <laughs> mini mk program it's isolating all right yeah well there's and there's fun like the conscious memories i have of it are are really like kind of tragic you know yeah. like yeah. i feel like a, I, I feel triumphant in in my experience i don't have any i don't have any um I don't wear the victim tag at all. And so, but I mean, there are moments where I'm, my hands pressed up, a little child, hands pressed up against the glass and there's everyone going out to recess and I'm stuck in this room with this strange person, you know, and just a lot of that stuff. So I had done, and so fast forwarding up into my teens, I'd run away. There's a lot of weird stuff in my life by this point. And um, someone had slipped me some LSD. I was probably 12. I was a wild child. And um, that, that really opened the gates of perception in a whole new way. Um, yeah. and, started, and started a whole new process of what's real, what is waking, um, and what are, the, what's all this other stuff that just happened? You know, what, why are the walls fading away and why am I experiencing these entities that are there, but they're not there. And so it's all kind of been a, a snowball effect from there. And then you move up through like 2012 and, um, you know, and, and strange experiences have happened all along. I just have, a, I have a whole kettle of them. And I think at 2012 for me, 
actually the 11 11 and then 2012 happened and when i was perceiving what everyone was experiencing as a hollywood movie experience bang bang shoot them up the world's you know volcanoes all that i'm thinking this is a this is an energetic shift happening and my mind was there with that. This is something that is happening, but unseen yet. It's actually happening on another level. And um, since I started projecting into that idea at that point, everything has kind of unfolded from there. And that became, I became more, I became less tolerant of of follow getting on the rat wheel, right? I became less tolerant of power over and, um, and less, I guess I, I went through a definitely a judgy period about um, people that following the rules, doing what they say, dying and regretting their lives. And then I started to come into this idea of the whole filler people, like, uh, you know, like uh, programs. Dolores Cannon. Yes. Yeah. So the, some of that started ringing really true to me. And I brought that into my personal life instead of all the others. I started looking at people in my family, right? Instead of it's all the others. Well, there's these people in my family that I feel qualify. These, they're these programs and they're, you know, they're emotional. They have, they cry, they have a life, they're living their life, but they don't go, there's no depth there. And I started to understand that through this sparkle in the eye I see in people that I feel are fully there. And um, so one of the ways I navigate that is who's going to go deep, who's literally going to go balls deep. And if you're not willing to go there, there's some sort of red flag in me that suggests this is um, illusionary. And so, I mean, I can just peel back layers for you, but you I think- just, um, You just actually- <laughs> Anish, I just love you. I just, I, 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 love I just so love you. Emily. You're already my favorite person. <laughs> well, no, but what she just did was she broke down a concept we've talked about yeah. repeatedly, which is this idea I sensed it for a long time of what I call synth bots or software programs running in the background of the ma the matrix. NPCs. On player Plus, characters, yeah, NPCs. Yeah. Yes. So, you know, when when you sense that, and it, that to make that statement is so radical because you're saying basically the people around you are not quote real or like spirit beings or. They are. They are. They're just on autopilot. Mm. You know, I had a good friend of mine explain it to me uh, recently that what his theory of what's going on is that if you accept that everything's happening now, including everyone, all your past and future lives are all occurring now, mm -hmm. but um, your focus, your consciousness can only be in one of those at one time. That's right. So when you're here, if you're here, all the other lives are on autopilot. So maybe the people who are here who are on autopilot are, have their focus elsewhere. Well, that's that interesting. That's, yeah, that's, that's, that, you know, that, cool. that actually makes some things make sense for some people who I'm very frustrated with because mm -hmm. the thing that they see as truth may have been true in another time. Mm -hmm. These are good people. They're, they're good people. They're not stupid and they're not, um, um, careless and they're not naive or maybe a little naive or whatever but that also could be considered something from another they're time well programmed they're well programmed they're, <laughs> yes. Yes. But, but but in another in another reality or on a different timeline or at a different place in time the things that they're concerned with would be the things to be concerned with they're just not the things to be concerned with now Absolutely. you know what i mean so that's very interesting jerry i like that plus it gives so everybody jerry, a chance <laughs> well, I have a, I actually want, I Sorry. have a caveat in there. She's not so, done. well, no, yeah. I, I am done. I'm willing, I'm, I'm done. But I wanted to add to that what you just said, Jerry, is that so, like, when I, when, when I brought that into my personal life, there, there was no time in which any of these people, some, you know, the people that I'm, I'm personally referring to, uh -huh. um, were ever able to go beyond the program sure. to get out. Right. So if I, I've always been on the fringe and so everyone in my family knows that the people attracted to me are there with that. Um, so that's why I question 
how much whatever soul content whatever that flicker mm -hmm. is they have i really I never saw it. So if they are in and out, if they're dreaming and then it, maybe I always experience them out years, year after year, day after day, some of these people that were just never there, just get up, go to, you know, but they were nice people. They've been nice to me or mean to me, but they were, you know, they had all the regular stuff, but you couldn't get beyond the base. I totally think there are true real NPCs here too. Okay. Yeah, no, I see. So it's a gray area. There's, yeah, it's there's yeah. definitely yeah. There's, like if you listen to Dolores Cannon, she talks about the background people, and those aren't even real people. That's just filler. Yeah. Vision. So what, what, these are walk-on actors in the in the synthetic script yeah. that's running in the background. Yes. Yeah, that's what that's what I would call an NPC. Yeah. Nish Nish brought up something that like what you were saying, Nish. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like Nish, what you were saying is I like I totally get it. Like I I there's people in my life that are like that. There's a few of these that are different that I have a hard time just classifying as that. And so that's what I was speaking of. But what you said, my cat is going crazy now. She likes this conversation. Um, <laughs> but uh, what you said made me think that maybe it's also and this is just something to consider. There's something about us. About mm -hmm. about you or me or or Brandy or Jerry whatever yes that, like somehow has some sort of maybe their frequency can't hold with ours and it doesn't allow them to be switched on in this reality right like that's one of the things that I've noticed is that some people just can't take me it, yes. they might even like me but they can't take me and it almost immediately makes them shut down and not shut down because I'm doing anything to make them shut down but just my energetic frequency almost it's like when i walk by a light post and it turns off sometime like the yes. same thing may happen to a person. yeah that I, you know i question that too i have that experience well perpetually outside my house the lights are on all through the street except for my house and it's a it's a, it seems to be i love it it's a but it's a big yeah. deal like it's the only um i question that too emily i ha get strange reactions from people my whole life and i'm constantly saying well, what is this and i've mm -hmm. i've always settled in on it's an energetic thing but what mm. what is that difference some people treat me like i'm the big bad wolf like i'm going to eat them really they're like <laughs> terrified of me and they don't know me they don't perceive me it's yeah. like it's yeah. like a, an energetic animalistic fight or flight experience i have with people or people have actually with me yeah, no, I, I, I get it. <laughs> I, I, I get it. And I, it makes me, and then other, but you know, it's interesting, but do you also find that there's other people that just love it? Like there's some people that just can't like, you know, like it's, like, yes. it's more now yes. than it used to be. Some people like just can't get enough. It's almost like I'm like, um, like some sort of like a drug or caffeine or something for them and, and they enjoy it. And, and I'm not talking about the ones that are energy vampires or energy stealers. Yes, I agree. People, you know, there's some people who just like something about how I am makes them like suddenly come to life in like a different way than they normally do. And, and they appreciate that and they enjoy it. But it only came after years and years of me people making me feel the way you just described, like some sort of, you know, like monster that was going to eat them or something yes. like that. <laughs> well, I, I bartended forever and it was always funny to encounter like the people that are feel strong about me really just come in and they're at me you know and it's good i feel like wow this is kind of this is tribe and also in this particular time we're in right now that is wild um especially with this weird looping aspect of time that seems to be flowing fast that i feel like we're finding each other also so for mm -hmm. whatever reason yeah. we're all starting to our vibrations we're connecting we're here we are yes and here yep. we are talking well, I think I think how we're gonna. Know, I think what's happening, at least with our tribe, is whatever our group is, and I'm not saying that there are others out. There aren't others out there that are just as valid or important or whatever. Is that maybe what we come from is a similar frequency? Like yeah, I had I, having yeah. this conversation with someone the other day that maybe we completely misunderstand like years and time. And like it, the like, so if, if certain frequency works for you, maybe that's the equal to being from that time period. Like that was when your first life was, mm -hmm. right? Like you know, 432, 440, 528, mm -hmm. this and that, whatever, right? I think some of us carry with us a, a frequency that is coded for something and only others who come from that <coughs> same, now it doesn't mean we all have the exact same frequency, but we come from like a similar band, like the similar band with, yes. you know, like a yes. similar the frequency. And, and, uh, spectrum. You know, the frequency band, right? Yeah. Spectrum. And, 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 and when we coalesce, we can tolerate each other and also 
each other's frequency does things to activate things in the other one. And sure. just things start to sort of fire and come together like magic. You could also look, like at, that. look at that spectrum as your timeline. And if you can, yeah. if you can resonate within that spectrum, then you can be part of that timeline or that dimension or whatever the hell it oh, is. Absolutely. Yeah. It's like spooky action at a distance where no matter how far apart we are, if we're resonating within that band, we, we are resonating together. It doesn't matter. And we find each other and that yeah. can change obviously, as you had just addressed that are, you know, it's a sign in a way, S I N E. I think, yeah. I think we yeah. all have a, a unique intuition in, as into who is all here, all in, all here, you know, whose focus is in this space. And that's how we also identify each other. It's not something we go, oh, he's one. Well, you do in your head, but, you know, you can, you can always tell if you meet a live one, right? It's never like, I'm not sure. Yes, there's no question about yeah. it. <laughs> right. it's not, sometimes there's questions about the, le the level of how how programmed someone is, like NPC-wise or, or background course. character-wise. When you meet a live one, you know it. There isn't a question. Yeah. Yes. I, 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 all right. So, and Jerry, how about, how about you? Like, how, you know, like we, how did you sort of find yourself, um, you know, in this place with these knowledges and awarenesses and, and whatnot? Because like in some, in some ways, like I've chatted with you enough to know that in some ways you're like kind of a regular guy, but then you also have this interest in all this weird stuff and these weird people. And eventually I realized you were weird too. And so. Oh yeah, I'm weird. <laughs> Um, uh, Jerry is a connoisseur of woo. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I we love it. <laughs> I do eat it up. Yes, I do. I, I okay. So um, I was born a poor black child. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, that, 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 that's going to be what gets the video taken down right no, there. Right? The video is not going to. Did you see the Jim Fetzer, Kerry Cassidy video about Parkland? That's still up. Okay. So don't worry about right. it. Of course it is. Okay. <laughs> I, yeah, it's just true. <laughs> anyway, um, let's see. Uh, I think my journey started when I realized that the Catholic Church was performing cannibalistic rituals and disguising it as mass. Mm -hmm. um, and that was yeah. through, uh, because I started playing D&D &D with my friends and I'm like, hey, this ma oh, magic, oh my God, they're doing magic. <laughs> that whole thing clicked in my head. And I, you know, by that time I, I was probably freshman in high school. I had already read the Illuminati trilogy at least three times. I, I had gamed with a group of 18 year olds, conspiracy theorists. So they fed me tons of shit. Uh, but then I went off to college and became a Sorari man for 30 years and ignored everything that I had learned in my, in my teens. And in 2015, I had a, uh, I saw an orb in my backyard, or above the house in my backyard, which was, and I, I had been watching a Simon Parks video at the time going, why the hell come, how come I never see UFOs? And I go outside and I see one and it was kind of weird. And it's, that is what kind of started me on this. And then I saw it again a month later with my family, my parents too. So my dad said, it's a plane. <laughs> and it was, it wasn't a plane. So, and that was in um, July of 2015. And I think I met Randy the, that summer or the summer after, and you too, Emily. Yeah. And everything I've learned about esoteric stuff and UFOs and Fortiana and whatnot, I've learned since then. The conspiracy stuff I was deeply in. See, once he was initiated, once he saw the craft, then I could enter his life. <laughs> no, 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 I didn't mean... I didn't know. Was it, I wasn't aware of you until then. Of course not. Yeah. Was it, was it a was it a blue sphere? It was orange. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it wasn't blue. I, dude, I was into the Corey. Man, I was all up Wilcox ass for a long time. You know, back when I believed that stuff. A lot. A lot of people were, and yeah, was, you know. And I came to realize that what these people are, what 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 some would call gatekeepers, what they are really. The, uh, they're, they, they hold you in a pen with an open gate mm -hmm. and they stand by it to make you think they're a gatekeeper, but you can leave any time into the next pile of woo that you find. You can check out any time you like, but you can never leave. Exactly. You always got to keep a, a toe in there because you never know what kind of crazy shit's going to come out of their mouth. Yeah. It's the eight of swords in the tarot. Ah, <laughs> exactly. You blindfold yourself and walk out yeah. at any time. So, so yeah, so that's, that's been my journey. And um, I've, 
I've, I've met a lot of interesting people. And, and as I said earlier, I like to lurk and I've been like slowly interfacing with person, not personalities, but people who seem to have knowledge or collect knowledge in the community in the background without being public about it. And just because I'm, you know, not interested in becoming famous, neither of us are. It's more, if anything, this is all for our own personal knowledge and we just like to share. Yeah. So, um, so I've, I've made lots of friends and yeah. uh, when we had the show idea and I'm like, well, I got a shitload of friends who would come on and we just start booking people. And that's how that happened there. I think that's the, neither Randy or I are interested in being famous either. The only benefit of having a public profile is that I can say something and if it resonates with people, people who it resonates with will come find me. And so I'm able to, um, it, it, it creates this, an easier way to kind of gather our tribe. You know what yes. I mean? Like I, I'm noticing that the people that I always wanted to meet my whole life uh, are showing up now. You know what I mean? Now that I've been actively doing this for, you know, two years now and whatever, and, and, you know, sort of, um, putting out all of those, it almost seems like the crazier shit I say, the more, the more cool people I meet. So, this, yes. you know, this, never, yes. Well, it's never been a numbers game. First off, yeah. nobody sucks more at promoting anything than I do. I can barely get the shows out. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I honestly don't care about the numbers. What, what I have dis- what I've discovered, and I think what you've discovered as well as there's an interesting kind of synergistic thing that goes on where the connections become in a matrix multiplying logarithmically, exponentially, and you begin to find very interesting twists and turns in the area of, of relationships and knowledge base. And yep. that's really all this is. This is just a broadband means for us to selectively put out what we want to put out and then have that feed back to us with other people who are reasonably Mm like-minded. So we're we're basically doing the network effect, but it has nothing to do with the standard models of media, news, show business, or anything else. This isn't even alternative media. Mm -hmm. You know, what we're doing is we're just using a medium to put out something that is kind of almost like a signal call. It's like the bat signal on top of the, you know, the, 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 the yeah. roof. It's totally a beacon. It's a beacon. Sure. It's a beacon. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, awesome. So, all right. Oh, so, so further to, yeah. sorry, I was trying to think of yeah. a word, but, but in our verticals, as you said before, which was a really excellent statement. Thank you for that. Um, we connect dots. And that's yes. what we're, we're broadcasting those connections. And that's important because other people, people like me, I can, I like to connect wide swatches of dots, not just mm-hmm. little ones. So for people who are like that, I think I heard Paul, Dr. Paul Laviolette calls it a system theorist. So if that's what yes. it is, um, yeah. you know, for those types of people out there, it's good to have verticals where, with dots connected that they can refer to. Yeah. So, Cool. You know, at this point, also, you guys are sort of just as a side effect of what you're doing, collecting a very interesting data set on a very interesting group of people, right? Like that have certain, some things in common, but are widely diverse. And then you can listen to them. You, you've heard them give their reports. So you tend to go through the same sort of questioning and whatever. And it's very interesting. It'll be very interesting at some point, almost if you went through and contrasted and compared. And, and you'll be able to figure out something that, you know, was not... Um, was not, you know, accounted for in some ways before, right. other than just people recognizing that, you know, that someone had something in common with them. So that, that's a really cool aspect of it as well. All the data is being put into an ELK stack right now, so we can do visualizations on it. It was always our intent to find um, overlap, though. And, yeah. um, and for me in particular, because I know there are people out there that have experienced the same things I have that are extremely strange. So it, it, it's, um, it's a little bit of uh, the, the code of pa- the patchwork coat, you know, who's having these experiences and, and, and what's the rate? How many of us are experiencing some of these similar, similar things? And as yeah. I said earlier, dr- the dream, the dreamscape, although I think this is part of that, is a good place to start fishing. Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. And also, the other thing we wanted to do was try and find commonalities to see if, um, to look for like future type event signals. Yes. <laughs> Almost like wow. treating dreams as remote viewing and mm -hmm. trying to find yeah. connections between that was one other goal. Yeah, I, well, I think they're, I think they, they are like in some ways, like I think, I think, I think there's a variety of different levels and kinds of dreaming. And I think there is certainly one level that is absolutely remote viewing um, because it looks exactly, cer certain kinds of dreams look exactly in terms of like tone and texture, like my remote views do. So why, why wouldn't you be able to have a remote view when you're sleeping as well? You know well, what I mean? Effectively when you're um, doing remote but, viewing, effectively when you're doing remote viewing, what you're doing is you're taking the brain in stages down from beta to alpha, mm -hmm. theta. Once you hit delta, there's this delicate balance that occurs where if you hold it there long enough and then you have either, uh, um, what, do they, what do they call it when they, basically they attach a query to this, much like you would in a database. Uh, this is this is how military remote viewing works. Yeah. And at that point, because you're plugged in, you pull that data and then you begin to move within the field that that data itself is beginning to create. I still can't remember the term that they use. Right. You know, um, we've been some friends of my, of, and myself have been doing some remote viewing experiments uh, recently, um, and we all agree that what. CRV, controlled remote viewing, the, the military kind is doing is they're creating a sigil with their target ID. That's what it is, target. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. the sigil, so what you're describing then, that, that action of pooling in the domain, and all that, that's yeah. you know, magic. It's chaos magic. Of course it is. Yeah. I, I know, but it's really, it's really interesting. Well, because they gave it a scientific aura, especially in terms <laughs> yes. of the CRV, that was necessary in order to bring it into the realm where it was controlled, which is hence the CRV aspect of it. I just don't, I don't think many people understand that they're the same thing. No, they yeah. don't, no, because yeah. basically they yeah. encoded it in such a way that it would meet, you know, military standards. And well, there's a lot of baggage if you mention the word magic anyway, and sigils and any of the language. Yeah. But science is magic. Everything's magic. Right. Well, we understand this, but if you're, we're, we're throwing that out into the masses. Well, science, <laughs> here's the problem with this. This goes to the core of something. I don't want to drag us too far down this, but. Drag science, us, drag us. Science supplanted <laughs> magic. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Look, yes. look, look at what happened in that era. Go back 500 years and look what coexisted at that time. And you begin to realize that uh, specifically the, the royal societies that were growing up um, around the court of Queen Elizabeth I, for mm -hmm. instance, there was actually a coexistence of what you would have called scientists at that time who were also commingling in the same court with outright sorcerers. Uh, yes. Sci science, ba science basically took a white coat and used it to normalize magic. Exactly. It right? took the like, wizard's cape and gave it yeah. a white coat. Yeah. And that's materialism. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the the latest or one of the I think I think it's the late, latest skeptical that just came out is an uh, interview with Dean Radin, Doctor Dean Radin. Yes, mm -hmm. it's excellent. He's talking exactly about this about how scientism is losing. It's so bad. Mater uh, materialism. Yeah. I'm sorry, scientism is losing too, but <laughs> materialism is losing. Yeah. We're getting, moving into a post-materialism world. I don't think he said that. I think Alex said that, but whatever. That idea. Yeah, yeah, That's no, and lar largely because. Uh, you can have quantum physics, as it's called, and right. still lean on, on materialism anymore because it negates it. it right. It, it doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work at all. But I find it interesting, too, as if we are going through some kind of shift in consciousness, I'm finding it interesting there's a corresponding shift in space theory and what's happening out there like dark matter is disappearing now like mm -hmm. we can't find it it's like i don't know are they just getting does, to the point how does dark matter disappear <laughs> and we knew it was there but we didn't have the negative equations out to the 10th decimal point and i didn't carry the how does <laughs> the theories that, didn't hold up that's what it is that's exactly what it is mm -hmm. but everything's theory even gravity
Well, that that's what's so world. that's what's so controversial Welcome is our world. <laughs> yep, <laughs> the theory of everything. We've been debunking gravity, the shape of the Earth, and I don't even talk about flat Earth. I'm talking non-ball, non-flat, dealing with toroidal fields, yes, constantly shifting fluctuation field. And yes, we are ener energetically altering it. Um, yes, we've uh, we've said we are basically generators of both time and gravity as you understand gravity, which it's not really gravity. Yeah. Buoyancy, buoyancy no, or something. It's crazy. I don't know what it is. I don't know what shape the world is either. I don't care. I'm not, I'm not a shape. But the whole Whatever toroidal field is. thing really feels right, rings true, and um, yeah, it's, it's shaping my outview. The toro that's how I think of it too, actually, toroidal field with the north and south poles. Mm-hmm. Yep. I see, I see it as sort of the toroidal field and there's a disc in the middle. So mm -hmm. there's right. a flat. That's the flat plane. Yeah. A disc, right. The, a disc with a toroidal field that also has like a vortex, like a cone coming in from each side. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Like I think there's all, all of these things are coming together. And so like, it's the biggest, mm, this whole idea that it either is this or is that it's either flat or it's round it's is, or even, it, it's both and, right? It, like, right, both it, and is a good way. This, this is why I stopped paying attention to the flat earth people because they're so adamant it has to be, I'm like, there are infinite possibilities between yep. flat and round. Yep. You, know, you can't say well, it's also, one or the other. And also like, what, like, what are, what are we going to, like, what is it? Uh, so if they discover that it's flat, what are they going to do? Make it round? Like, you know what I mean? Like, what is that? Like, they can discover it's flat and then everything else is still the same, but we know the earth is flat. That isn't like. It's not going to change anyone's lives. And, and nothing. Well, the model that we just described. The, the truth of the matter is that what it does change is the fact that, in all likelihood, they are concealing huge amounts yes. of world of land. from us. Right. They are concealing <laughs> the nature of what uh, there is space something is. of space. Yeah. Because space, you know. They shoot a rocket up and you go, oh, look at that. And soon it's going to break through and it'll be at. Yeah, you know, right. Uh, and, and unfortunately, that was all drama designed to, again, like the, the, the globe and train us into a certain way of viewing things when, in fact, what we believe is that space isn't up there. If anything, it's probably dimensionally accessible through various portals vortexes and places inside the earth but it's not up the way we understand up there's no up there's no down and there's only in there's only in there's only so in. In. <laughs> in the end that's what it is i think it's i think the portals in the ocean. Is deeper in <laughs> portals well, in the that's ocean exactly what we think it is too oh Maybe, really cool yeah. oh no we've talked about that extensively it has something to do with water that's why they fly over the water. That's why it, all the launches are on the water. Yeah. It's the worst place to shoot something that has to be perfect. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, and I, 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 uh, we just, we, we just made a little podcast for our patrons that just went out, but I had the um, float tank experience this week. Oh, how was it? Week, and it was, I it, love it, those. It Did you turn it to a monkey? No. I've always been a monkey. So. <laughs> um, I, I, it was fascinating on many levels, but it confirmed to me that the secret space program exists inside of a flotation tank. Oh yeah, <laughs> right? that's, like, a, whole, that's, that's, that's a whole right? virtual that's, reality. Yep. yep. Right. The, the, um, it was very. In, I mean, it confirmed a lot of things for me. It also was interesting how. Uh, it just felt like home to me. It felt like that's where yeah. I come from. That's yeah. what I want to go back to. I wanted, I didn't want to, I was, I was done laying still after an hour, but I could have stayed in there for an endless amount of time and just farted around and done shit. And like, been like, oh, what is it like to listen to music in here? What is it like to eat in here? What is it like to talk to people in here? Like I didn't, I did not feel um, claustrophobic, which surprised me. I was, I, I was concerned. Like one of the reasons I'd put off doing it for so many years was concern over like panic attacks or yeah. some surprise, some surprise memory that I hadn't expected coming up and then being stuck in that space while that happened. None of that. It was just like, it felt like home. Like I just wanted, I don't know. Like I just, I, I, I thought like every day since then I want to go back. Yeah, you know it I mean? opens like, up just, in a weird way. Mm -hmm. so, you, I mean, like you're, it, you, like you have the knowledge that you're in the box, but it doesn't feel like you are. Like I, right. I could have been, there could have been an infinite amount of space around me and there was no, the only, the, 
and this the one that I placed when I went to was really was really nice, but it was also just it really was sensory deprivation. I, I'm one of those people I can pick up the little frequencies from yes. everywhere, and there was nothing. There was my heartbeat, my breath, and if I moved, there was splashing, but there was nothing else. And yeah. I, I I like that. that it's basically a it modern day necromantium. Yeah, <laughs> you know, right yeah. from the nice, old Greek nice. period, yeah. Yeah. and yeah. and so they were tapping into all of yeah. this way back then through this deprivation experience and reaching through what we apparent time right, and and then writing about it, and we can do that too. If you put absolutely candles in there, would it become a psychomantium? <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Uh, that's a good question, Jerry. So, why, 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 why don't you go try and let us know, Jerry? <laughs> well, I mean, it would be really cool to scry from inside a sensory deprivation tank. But the blackness alone, yeah. you can just scry into that. You don't, yeah, you don't that's need true. it. True. So, yeah. all these, all these things we just kind of riff through, kind of, they all feed back into Nox Mente in some very interesting ways, because what you are exploring on the show is basically the fabric of people's dream state, their dream work, their dream beings. The range of that, uh, how many shows have you done so far? In <laughs> We're close to 40. Okay, that's pretty good sampling. Yeah. So yeah. In, the, in, 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 in the course of doing that, you obviously have gotten a, a, a taste for the diversity of dream state. Give me something that sort of nutshells the, the, the far end of that, the thing that maybe most surprised you about what people report about dream state. Go ahead, Nish. I got one. Go ahead. Go ahead, Jer. I'm going to actually have to ponder that. Okay. The one thing that, that struck me uh, quickly was based on my – I had made assumptions about things. Obviously, we all do. So I had felt that – astral space and lucid dreaming were pretty much the same thing. And I, it was pretty clear by the 10th or 15th show that it wasn't, it was completely different things. So the, I, it, the way I, the way I have it in my yarn map in my head that the astral plane is its own place and dream space is its own place, whether or not you peel off a copy for yourself, I don't know, but it's, they're distinct. Mm, that's very interesting. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I found them. I found, um, I think the stuff around paralysis has been the, it's all super interesting to me. So it's hard for me to categorize anything. I'm terrible at that. Um, but the sleep stuff around sleep paralysis and the diversity in which people are experiencing it is um uh, is surprising to me because y you have your own experience or not a lot of people are not having that experience at all and um i you know like one like ren collier he he's not afraid he doesn't have any fear so when he um you know he just he like pushes towards any entity that might be showing up or anything that is think you know he thinks is trying to be um aggressive or scary and, and, and literally eats thought, some of them yes true his first thought is never you are part of my consciousness either it's always yeah. an external thing for him which is a real interesting thing about him yeah he was he was a standout with that but just that that so that wide swatch of people of experience around paralysis has been enjoyable for me to hear he had, he had woken up one night in a dream he woke up from a dream into another dream and he had a a black thing on his back octopus like an octopus mind you well he felt okay so this is interesting and it tied into a a very profound prophetic dream i had and i didn't i don't think i've shared this with anyone publicly he felt this in the sleep paralysis experience the dream within the dream he felt this thing lie on the bed with him and mm -hmm. and and cuddle up next to him on his back and he's and he thought uh, what and he he talks he's like what the fuck is this and um 
and so he gets up to see what it is and he didn't see it but he saw the impression on the bed and he realized it's attached to his spine and he pulls it and since he has no fear and so he's aggressive like that he he's like you gonna you're gonna do this to me and he pulls it off and he throws it down and it's like an octopus and he and his thing was kill it and eat it and he did and um wow. which was seriously awesome right taking that power he's took his he's like i'm getting my energy back yep. and so that tied into a very profound experience i had last year where it was it these things those entities whatever that is whatever you want to call it was it was the same image they were kind of um cephalopod like and they mm -hmm. were all over on people attached and very cthulhu attached on people and um in the in the dream vision they were everyone in charge like uh, in running the game here was yeah. had one and they and i had stumbled on them entering through and this is a dream symbol but entering through orifices mostly in the head so remember that's a dream symbol and yeah. um so a dream symbol for what portals for um getting into our right absolutely yeah. and so this was one of those things that was profound i i'm like you're describing the exact but, same thing i've seen and They're we've here. all heard about them from a lot of people yeah, right so and so that that i just wanted to throw that out there that's, That's interesting. So interesting. Are, are we, are we in fact picking up, um, unawares these these parasites in dream state? Is is that is that what you you're getting at? Yes. Yeah. There in some and so what was great about Ren's experience was he didn't have any fear around it, and so he was able to clearly describe it, and um. So, because it seems like other people who are sensing entities, they, they're having a fear of them and they don't have clear descriptions. And so his just lined so perfectly up with what I had witnessed. And, um, and for whatever reason, that's the way I saw them as well. So I'm now, and then when I went looking, I see that there is, there's a cosmology around that image. And, um, yeah, and it's 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 symbolic in a way, right? The suckers, the tentacles, and and latching on like a leech, <clears throat> mm -hmm. and controlling yeah. and controlling these vessels. Maybe those are our souls. Okay, they feel <laughs> they feel a little not like that, but I'm it's possible. Kidding. And you know, I know Jerry, you're always like that. But I'm just saying that you know, there's I'm open. <laughs> it could be our okay, souls so, are. Uh, yeah, I mean, it could be driver okay. the driver. Yeah. So. Okay, so you what you, all that stuff you just said just brought up some really interesting stuff for me. So let's see, like like just things that I've been noticing and some things that I've experienced. So I had, and I, I don't know. I guess this is the first time I share this publicly, and it's weird. Um, when I was in like the very early stages of what I consider some of my deprogramming, right? Mm -hmm. um, I had something happen to me when I was sleeping in the bed. I was face down, and I felt energetically something try to enter my body through an orifice. Mm -hmm. And I, it was when I was just just about to sleep. I was like in that stage between like sleep and awake. And I just like jumped right up and was like, no, you know what I mean? But it felt, the feel of it was something like that. Like something that slipped, like not snake-like, but something more akin to like an octopus kind yes, of thing. Yes, there's a difference so that, there. There's a difference. The way the octopus moves is totally different. Mm -hmm. so, so I thought of that. I've also thought of... Um, do you guys know you guys know Kristen Sheree from Beyond the Veil or from Truth Frequency yes. Radio? Yeah. Okay. So they on the day of the eclipse, they did ayahuasca and they looked yep, at the yep, eclipse and yep. they saw something that was like a giant octopus or squid, like but it looked like um an oh, AI. Holy like crap. A, like a, they weren't the only ones too. Right. So they saw they saw, they saw they saw that there, right? And and, and it was super duper interesting. And around but, that but they were time, tripping. They were but tripping. That's when your eyes are open. <laughs> okay. But also at this point, they're they're at this point they're very experienced trippers. You know what I mean? And so like they this is not something they had seen before. And so you know what I mean? So I thought that was interesting and it matched up to some things that other people were saying who weren't. Yeah, but look at the track it threw him into. Both of them. They took their show into this everything's AI, all the time. 
Yeah, well, but that's a side that's a side thought from this the just looking at the experience on its yeah, own. Right. Let's just so okay, so so there's okay. that. One of the things that I have noticed, and actually Randy and I have had conversations about this, and as well with other people, for the last couple of years, Oct I was having this conversation with Jeff Gates too. Octopus are showing up everywhere in art, like modern mm -hmm. symbology modern art kind of stuff, things that have, even things that aren't octopus, things with like rings and circles on it that look like tentacles are, are very yes. popular um, in, in art. Um, the, I'm thinking of- They are the aliens yeah. here, the octopus. So I'm thinking, so I'm thinking, they are. So I'm, I'm get, I have a lot, I'm, so let me just unload this whole thing about the octopi and, and hear what you guys think about that. So I'm also thinking of, um, there's one episode of Fringe that has always particularly resonated with, well, a lot of them resonate, but there's one where this little boy like was kidnapped and they put something on the back of his neck and they were sucking his spinal fluid out and giving it to old people so that they wouldn't age. And I have a very weird thing in the back of, like I broke my neck when I was younger, but I have some interesting stuff going on there that when I get certain kinds of energetic attacks is extremely intense. It's very uncomfortable and it does feel like something is trying to either put something into me or take something out of me. Mm -hmm. And when I watched that episode of Fringe, it's like, it like he, he basically like put this metallic kind of clamp on his neck and was sucking stuff out through there. So Oof. what we're talking about is something more energetic, not quite exactly as physical, right. but, but in some ways a similar thing. Then you have a show come along like Altered Carbon where they're showing that these people the have- these, these I don't know that portable. show. Okay, that's, so that's I can't, really well, I haven't been, I haven't been able to watch it because I started, I saw the billboard and it gave me the freak, the chills completely. And I started trying to watch it, but it was just, it resonates too close to some of my that experience. That show is so it. triggering. I got through it, yeah. but it was not easy watching. And I, I like I'll, it. I like it. I I'll be able it, to, but. Mm. I'll be able to eventually get through it, be able to get through it. But at this moment, sometimes I have to wait and later I can go back and, and, and do it. But basically they're talking about, there's these things, the disc cortical stacks that go right in that area of the neck mm -hmm. where this kid, where this thing was on fringe, where I experienced this kind of thing. And that's mm -hmm. basically how they transfer people's souls from body to body. Not oh, souls, yeah. not so, like, souls, you know, consciousness. Consciousness. They're, so, they're very it, specific about that. Consciousness, I'm sorry, that's not what I meant. I meant consciousness, it's you not souls, you're right. When you, it, it is, yeah, your sleeve, I, yeah. I, 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 I completely meant consciousness, but said no, so. I know, yeah. I know. I know. They basically, it's basically when we hear what people are talking about with like uploading your consciousness to a computer, then you could download it onto something like that and yes. put it into the new sleeve. And they have the, the billboard has the sleeves, these bodies that are like laying there in a bag with like just a breathing apparatus. And then when that gets activated, oh, wow. this, the thing turns on and then they're in that body. It's, you know, kind of, it's oh, creepy, man. right? So oh. they, have all of they, that stuff. they have bodies on cold storage. To, uh, when you go to prison, they just imprison your stack. So yeah. you could be in prison for 300 years. If you have visitors, they put you in a temporary sleeve to do your visiting. So some people are coming out as children I, to visit with their parents, you know. Oh my, actually, Jerry, make sure you connect me to this show. Yeah, okay. I haven't, I haven't gotten that far. I, I literally have gotten about two or three minutes into the first episode. There's, <laughs> That's kind there's of a lot of deep stuff. programming in it. The thing that I've noticed, the thing that I found most interesting was that they could not have that technology unless they found this alien crystal. Of course. And it's of course. the of course, right. There's always this mystery component that you can never Because the aliens that. are all smarter than we are. <laughs> of course. They are. Somehow or another they may you know, it's, it's this whole alien thesis, good, bad, or indifferent, is if they could have, they would have. Right. What's well, that whole other, other dynamic, right? Yeah. Other, so, other, the others. I just looked, let, there's, zero, there's let, zero evidence of aliens just right there, period. <laughs> let, let me finish this octopus download because I want to hear like what you guys think when I finish this whole oh, I thought you were thing. done. I'm so sorry. I'm not done. Okay, You're so we're done. I'm sorry. I'm way, sorry. I'm wrap this. <laughs> Stop, <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> so, okay. So we, what you guys were talking about, about one of you mentioned like parasites that come in like when we're sleeping or whatever. Like I've mm -hmm. done a lot of talking about parasites and how there is some like larger parasite on the outside that is sort of energetically connecting to the parasites we have in our body and that we are feeding with the things that we eat and whatever. Mm -hmm. And that's why they yes. want to eat sugar. I've talked a lot about crystalline. Sugar. Yes. Crystalline, right? All that kind of stuff. So like, is there some sort of energetic thing? But then also... The very interesting thing about octopus is that if you've seen those videos of the octopus that can completely change their skin. Camouflage. Natural, you, yes. 
I've watched experiment. I've watched a video where a guy prints out like a crazy geometric pattern, puts it in the tank, and in like less than a second, the the octopus can make his skin look like this like crazy geometric pattern. It isn't just like natural stuff, right? They can make them themselves match anything. Anything. Yes. And you've seen the way that they move. There's this other video of an octopus that like gets into a bottle that's very small. The octopus is yes. big, but the way they're able to rearrange themselves. They don't so have like any bones. Some, no bones, but just even it, it just the way they move, it just seems even different than like any kind of like any other thing that we think of that way. Right? The way that they do it, it is so you can take something really, really incredibly big and fit it into a really, really small space. You know what well, I mean? what's, it, so, what's really important about that is, and I'm sorry to interject, is that that we can experience in waking life. We can see how the cephalopods are completely almost alien. And yep. this is in waking life. So it's here. It's here. It's here. It's here. And then we start experiencing this is this awakening of, is this possible through through quantum experience through multi dimensions whatever that that ex that exists here so of course you know this whole inner outer thing of course of course that exists within or without however we're viewing it from where we are right now it's One not like it's a blue a blue space chicken that's completely off into <laughs> left field this shit exists here Right. Yeah. Shout out to Cliff High there. Okay. I love Cliff so much. Oh, uh, we do too. <laughs> and he's coming back soon. Um, we're kind of at the pivot point of the show. So um, let's do this. Um, tell people where they can find Nox Mente, how they can view you, how they can connect with you. Sure. Uh, right now, we just are on YouTube. I eventually plan on making podcasts out of them and publishing them on Libsyn. I haven't done that yet. Um, if you go to noxmente.com, N-O-X-M-E-N-T-E.com, that'll take you right to our channel. Cool. Awesome. Emily, anything else we need to uh, brush on before we... Mm -hmm. No, just I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna get super weird in the second hour. So guys, make sure you join us at <laughs> patreoncom backslash off slash off planet media. And please, guys, go um, support uh, Nish and Jerry. Listen to their show. I know they don't care about numbers, but they deserve a much bigger audience than they have because they talk Absolutely. about some really interesting stuff. So, all right, yeah. we'll see you on the other side, guys. All right. And for those Thank of you we don't see on the other side, we will hunt you down.